Old wives tales, you know them, you love to repeat them, but are any of them actually true? I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four, and today we're going through seven old wives tales that are common to pregnancy and birth and seeing if any of them actually hold up to the science. This is actually the first video I am filming since we hit a million subscribers, which is wild to me. I, I'm still in shock. It's how did this happen? Thank you so much. I am so proud of this channel, where we came from, where we're going, and all the good we have done here. If you'd like to stick around, we'd love to have you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Let's jump into the video. An old wives tale is basically a word of mouth superstition or urban legend that has been passed down through folklore from generation to generation. And for some reason, a lot of them tend to center around pregnancy and birth. So the first one we're talking about today is that the fetal heart rate is predictive of the fetal sex. And this is what I hear in my clinic all the time. I actually hear it both ways. I will have someone in one room say, oh my gosh, the heart rate is high. That means it's a boy. And then in the next room they'll say, oh my gosh, the heart rate is high. That means it's a girl. Nobody can keep it straight what the actual legend is. Unfortunately, this one has not held up to the test of science, at least not in the way that we would expect it to based on how people use it to try to predict the sex of their baby. So if that's the case, how does it keep getting passed along? Well, one, because Back in the day when all of these started, we didn't have any way to accurately predict what baby you were having. And two, it's right 50% of the time, as are any of these that are trying to predict the sex. There is actually some very limited data that says maybe a female fetus is more likely to have a higher heart rate during the process of labor and delivery. And the theory here is that they just have a little bit of a different reaction to stress hormones than a male fetus, but that is only in the final moments of labor and delivery, that is not going to be very helpful if we're just trying to guess the sex of a baby based on the average heart rate. There's also limited data that says a female fetus might mature their heart rate and the dynamic changes in that heart rate a little bit quicker in pregnancy. What that means is as we go through pregnancy, you see a fetal heart rate pattern changes a little bit the further along you get. And they think maybe a male fetus is just a little bit slower to develop those dynamic changes. You might have a little bit lower heart rate in a male fetus during the third trimester, but again, that only comes down to about one beat per minute difference, which obviously is not going to be super helpful if you're trying to use it to predict the sex of a baby. It might show up as statistically significant in literature, but if we're just looking at a baby's heart rate, that's not going to help us at all. So unfortunately, I do have to say this one is debunked. The speed of a fetal heart rate when you go in for that first ultrasound early on is not going to be very helpful in predicting the sex of your baby. This next one is one that I am certain everybody has heard, and that is how much heartburn you have during the pregnancy is predictive of whether your baby will be born with hair. And this one actually has some scientific support behind it. So the way they studied this one is actually really funny to me. They basically got people to rate their heartburn throughout pregnancy. And then at the time of birth, they took two pictures of each baby and sent them to independent reviewers to rate how luscious their locks were. And the independent reviewers would write that down and then they would go back and compare the heartburn ratings to the baby's hair ratings. And what they found is that people who reported more heartburn during their pregnancy and more severe heartburn during their pregnancy actually did end up having babies who were independently rated as having more luscious locks of hair on their head at the time of birth. In fact, an even more interesting correlation to me in this, because my babies were born completely bald, is that 10 of the 12 babies they looked at who had no or below average amounts of hair, their parent had no heartburn at all during the entire pregnancy. So what's the theory behind why this might actually be a realistic association. The authors of this notably small but interesting study came to the conclusion that they think it may be hormonally related. Just to quickly explain, I think we've talked about this a bunch of times before, but basically the lower esophageal sphincter, which is at the bottom of your esophagus, keeps acid in the stomach and out of the esophagus. During pregnancy, changes in your hormones cause that to be able to open more easily, letting acid from the stomach into the esophagus. They theorize that those same hormones would be related to how well the hair on a baby's head grows. So they're saying if your hormone levels are higher, you're more likely to have reflux or heartburn. And if your hormone levels are higher, the baby is more likely to grow more hair. Who knows? It's really interesting. Anecdotally for me, my babies were all bald and I had very little to no heartburn during my pregnancies, but 
You know what? I don't know. I think it's interesting and I love using this study to talk about it in clinic. This is another one you've probably heard in many different ways and that is weight distribution on the person who is pregnant is predictive of the sex of the baby. You may be noticing a theme here that a lot of these revolve around predicting the sex of the baby. This is likely because back in the day when these started becoming urban legends that were passed down through folklore, there was no reliable way to determine what sex baby you were having before the time of birth. So they came up with these ideas and associations to see if they could make any predictions. This one doesn't have any science to back it up either. So you might've heard people say, oh, you're carrying high, are you having a girl? Oh, you're carrying low, are you having a boy or vice versa? You might've heard people say, oh, your hips are wide, that's because you have a girl. You may have even heard it in the way, not necessarily of weight, but oh, you're glowing, that means it's a boy. Oh, you look tired, the girl is stealing all of your beauty, all of these things that people say. But unfortunately, none of these have any science to back them up. The overall determination of where you gain weight during pregnancy is primarily related to genetics. The shape of the belly, how high it is, how low it is, is primarily related to both fetal positioning and the body type of the person who is carrying the baby. So I am very short-waisted. That means that all of my babies look like they were up in my lungs because I had nowhere to grow babies except that way. My torso is very short. Someone who's long-waisted may carry their babies a little bit lower. It just depends on your body type, your genetics, and the way the baby's sitting. If you have a baby that's transverse where it's straight to cross in the abdomen instead of up and down, of course your belly's gonna be wider because the baby is laying and taking up space in that direction. So no science for this one, sorry to break any hearts. So this one is one that actually came up in my clinic a while back that I had never heard before. And when I went to look it up, it turns out this is a common belief that people have been told by their grandparents or parents at some point in their life. So what this person said to me was, if I put my hands above my head, will it actually make my baby's cord wrap around its neck? This is one I've now heard in many different forms, but that tends to be the most common thing that people ask. And the answer is absolutely not. What you do with your body has no bearing on where the cord is around the baby. If a baby has a cord wrapped around its neck at the time of birth, it is most likely because it's rolling around in there and getting wrapped up in its cord. In fact, about a third of babies are born with what we call a nuchal cord, meaning the cord is wrapped around its neck. And most of the time, this does not cause any problems at all. Certainly there are rare instances where this can be very dangerous, but most of the time it is really common and not that big of a deal. But none of the time is it ever related to maternal positioning at all during the pregnancy. The next one comes also in a variety of fashions, but the most commonly repeated one I hear is that if you eat a bunch of bananas leading up to the time that you conceive, you're more likely to conceive a boy. Why would people think this? Well, actually this one is interestingly maybe a little bit science related. So there's this one study which basically came to the conclusion that a higher calorie diet in the preconception period and notably a higher potassium intake in the preconception period was associated with an increased chance of getting pregnant with a boy. However, I am a little bit skeptical when it comes to this one, and let me explain why. First off, we know how sex is determined, right? It's carried on an X or Y chromosome that comes from the sperm. So it makes absolutely zero sense to me how we would take preconception diet in the person who is getting pregnant and associate that with likelihood to have a boy or girl, because that's coming from the other side. Maybe we could look at that in a male and whether their sperm live longer if they're X or Y depending on their diet, but I don't see how this would be related to maternal diet before conception in any way. Maybe that would be theorized then that instead of it being the likelihood to conceive a male or female embryo, it's the likelihood of that embryo to implant. If that were the case, I think we would see that in IVF studies, and I don't know if that's specifically been studied or not, but I've never seen any data that would indicate preconception diet is more likely that a male or female embryo will be the one that implants. And then third, these have never been reproduced. So this is a single study with these findings that never have been able to be reproduced by any independent researchers. And finally, these numbers are really close to 50-50 chance. They range anywhere from about 46% to 55%, which is really not that far off from a 50% chance. So I have a hard time believing it, the data is there, it's never been reproduced, it's pretty close to chance, but we'll leave it at a maybe. If you've ever worked in a labor and delivery or you know anybody who has worked in a labor and delivery, then you have absolutely heard this one and probably even if you haven't, and that is full moons cause people to go into labor. Every seasoned 
labor and delivery nurse and obstetrician that I know will die on this hill. Unfortunately, the science isn't really backing us up here. There's quite a bit of data to look at on this one, but most of them are pretty small studies. One of the bigger studies was a five-year data review. In this study, they looked at five years worth of data and found absolutely no association with how many people delivered their babies or went into labor and the lunar cycle that was happening at the time of that delivery. That being said, Interestingly, there is some data on barometric pressure drops and the association with the chances that your water breaks or that you go into spontaneous labor. We see this clinically, and especially me living in Central Texas, when there is a hurricane or big storm coming. Anytime people are evacuating from the coast, we will see an influx of people coming in with their water broken. There is some data to support that these big drops in barometric pressure that happen in the days or hours leading up to a big storm could be causing people to break their water or go into labor at higher rates. I think it's really interesting. I don't know that the full moon is actually affecting people to the extent that we would like to believe in our superstitious labor and deliveries, but the barometric pressure drops leading up to storms is something that we have also all heard on a labor and delivery unit, and it does have some science to back it up. So this is one you've probably heard in a variety of forms as well, and that is looking at something ugly, particularly an ugly animal while you are pregnant will make your baby ugly. And while we all know that beauty is subjective, especially when it comes to newborn babies, there's no reason to think that something you look at or think about or do during pregnancy is going to make your baby ugly. How your baby looks is almost solely dependent upon genetics, and I promise you're not going to ruin its beauty by looking at a skunk while you are pregnant. All right, y'all, I hope that you learned something today. This was a really fun video to research and make. If you'd like to watch another video, I will link a playlist right over here. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I promise you will leave with things to tell your friends and I will see you next Monday.